of people call my videos offensive. Well, fuck you. Here at Black Rifle Coffee Company, we have a coffee club, which means you spend less time ordering and more time doing what you love. No look! Instead of worrying about microaggressions and what bathroom I'm gonna use, I believe it's important to support the people that actually serve our country. I've heard people say patriotism is racism. Well, as a veteran-owned company, we give zero fucks about your opinion. All right, well, uh, moving on from uh, the virus. You guys remember Black Rifle Coffee Company? Oh, Drink yeah. it every day. <laughs> I like, yeah, some, no, I've, 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 been enjoying, yeah. I've been enjoying the uh, Lieutenant Gary Powers uh, dark roast. <laughs> That's been really good. So yeah, I, br- I bring up Black Rebel Coffee because there's there was this big article in the New York Times about the company, and the headline is "Can Black Rifle Coffee Company Become the Starbucks of the Right?" And it, it's it, it you know it's it's an interesting piece because it, it touches on a lot of what we've touched on in in terms of Black Rifle Coffee and this whole kind of consumer culture war, but also this 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 uh, increasing fetish fetishization of operator culture, in in sort of like how how do I, I I'd like a T-shirt, but I'd like it to be tactical. I'd like espresso beans, but like you know, um, can can it have a skull on the yeah. bag? Do you have the do you, do you have the real bedpan that the Green Berets use? <laughs> um, so like, but like, you know, it's it's about their struggles to brand themselves as this kind of um anti hipster red state coffee company. Um, in in contrast to Starbucks, but it's about like them them running into the problem about having. So many of their fans, um, you know, looting the Capitol or killing people wearing their merchandise. And I, I just thought it'd be interesting to read a, a little bit from this article. I mean, it's quite long. It's by uh, Zayson, Jason Zengirl. Um, so I'm just going to dive in here uh, to the uh, New York Times piece about the Black Rifle Coffee Company. Uh, begins, like most Americans, Evan Hafer experienced the January 6th insurrection at the Ca- United States Capitol from a distance, watching it unfold on his television and his iPhone from Salt Lake City. What he saw did not surprise him. Hafer, who was 44, voted for Donald Trump. He was even open at first to the possibility that Trump's claims of sweeping voter fraud were legitimate until William Barr, Trump's attorney general, declared in early December that he could find no evidence that such fraud occurred. Still, Hafer told me recently, you're told by the commander in chief for months that the election was stolen. So you're going to have a group of people that are really pissed. While he disapproved of those who stormed the Capitol, he didn't believe that they or their actions constituted a real threat to the Republic. I've seen an insurrection, said Hafer, a former Green Beret and CIA contractor who served in Afghanistan and Iraq. I know what it looks like. Yeah, I've done them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah I've, I've personally. Yeah, I've, been, uh, I've yeah, done I've the right them. kind, the kind that we're doing to other people. The ones where they actually do overthrow the government. It says here, a Black Rifle was founded in 2014 by Hafer and two fellow veterans who served in Afghanistan and Iraq and who were enthusiastic enlistees in America's culture wars, too. The company billed itself as pro-military, pro-law enforcement, and anti-hipster. Early customers could download a shooting target from the company's Facebook page that featured a bow-tied man with a handlebar mustache. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? That's- they got a thing against barbershop quartets? That's 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 the person that's the number one person I like to fantasize about dumping bullets into is a, is a guy with a tweet little mustache. Oh, I just think about one of those uh, artisanal mixologists. <laughs> just like uh, the, the 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 Tim and Eric characters from that bedtime yes. story. Yes, roommates. Amigo, is that what I think it is? What are you listening to? It's some of my favorite music ever made. It's called Latin jazz. <laughs> no, 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 Tortuga. Uh, yeah, just just dumping a clip into like a, a paper cutout of one of those guys, you know, which is like, uh, which makes it kind of funny that like, I mean, again, it's like it's similar to this vaccine thing. It's just sort of like it's just like now that like the consequences of like everything they've done are coming to the fore. They're like, who, me? This doesn't have anything to do with me. Like to, to find out that the fans of your coffee company are actually like, you know, uh, quite violent, nasty people. It's just like, well, you've been cultivating that fan base. I mean, you we know? saw I mean, like, fucking, we saw Range 15, which was made by the Black Rifle Coffee Guppy guys. And that was one of the most fucking psychopathically bloodthirsty things I've ever seen in my life. Its early coffees included the Silencer Smooth Roast and the AK-47 Espresso Blend. During Trump's presidency, Black Rifle's gleeful provocations grew more directly political. It endorsed Trump's Muslim ban and bought Google ads based on searches for Kofifi. 
Before long, Black Rifle became the unofficial, unofficial coffee of the MAGA universe, winning public endorsements from Sean Hannity and Donald Trump Jr. In this context, the appearance of Black Rifle merchandise at the Capitol on January 6th was not exactly shocking. Nevertheless, Matt Best, the company's 34-year-old vice president, insisted that Black Rifle was singled out unfairly. Every brand. Name the brand. It was probably there. Walmart jeans, Nike shoes, he said. And then it's like one patch from our company. There's certain terrorist organizations that wear American brands when they go behead Americans. Do you think that they want to be a part of that? And I'm not drawing a parallel between the two. I'm just saying that there are things in business when you grow that are completely out of your control. And, you know, like, I, I kind of feel that with Matt. I mean, like, was I thrilled to see all the Chapo merchandise from all the footage that came out of the No Pussy Getting Convention? <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I was not happy to see that. But, like, yes, in business, they, when you have a brand, and there are certain things that are out of your control. However, unlike, for instance, like an ISIS guy wearing an Adidas tracksuit when he saw someone's head off, Adidas was not marketing um, uh, like selling uh, 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 shooting targets that were like, here, uh, kill the kafir or, or, or buy our death to the infidel espresso blend. You know what I mean? And it's just sort of like, uh, it seems a little disingenuous of them to just be like, this has nothing to do with our company. I do, I do love watching the progression here because we, we, we've been following Black Rifle since the creation, you know? Yeah. Because it was, it was um, an early thing of like, yeah, conservatives proactively being like, no, we're going to make our own treats. Like we're, we're not going to make the cooked treats. Like we're, we're also, we're going to allow you to have a consumer experience that's, you know, owned by one of us, not yeah. like you know, Sumner Redstone. And now like you get to see it all the way through. You get to see what happens to everyone, which is like, oh, wow, look how you act when you have something to lose. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a bitch? I guess it really I guess it really wasn't about the fineness of the beans and the uh, the the clarity of the liberal tears. It was just about the money the whole time. Yeah, I do like to see Matt Best again because he's Matt Best made the um, most horrifying thing we've ever watched for the show. Yeah. The Range 39 movie. Range 15. I just said it. Oh, well, I was in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Range 15. Range 15, yeah. And I would, like, just based on Range 15, I would consider him, like, one of the worst people, like, in the country. He's a just, demon, like, for sure. Yeah, he's an all. I mean, he's on one team, Matt. That's all you need to know. What the fuck yeah. is wrong with those guys? Uh, yeah, one team, Matt. You should go back to Belgium with that. But, uh... Yeah, no, this is like everyone, everyone's a cool fucking warrior for their cause until you can take something from them. Yep. <laughs> That's how they get you, buddy. Uh, this is just a nice little detail here. Uh, just a little further down, it says, Hafer, uh, who is a far more relatable stature, and, and I think in contract to Best, who they describe as like a uh, like an ultimate fighter, like a fucking brick shit house, fucking built like a Mack truck kind of guy. Um, and then it has some photos of uh, Kyle Rittenhouse and Eddie Gallagher wearing black rifle apparel. So it's just yeah, like, how could anyone like, like, take the like wrong two... message from this? You're supposed to do this to, to black people and like people outside of America. Um, it says uh, he uh, hey for us who have a far more relatable stature. Best likened him to Rocket, the genetically engineered raccoon in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Everyone's I, I, a what I love about consumer. That, I, lo yeah, I love about that is because like, like their whole thing is like we are set up like we are we are fighting a culture war four square against like the liberal hegemony and treats popular culture, uh, you know, modern social mores. But yes, I mean, we're also obviously still fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It, that Rocket is a card. Yeah. You know, I I'm I'm always arguing. You know, the great fight, the great civilizational fight, you know, what's cooler, Beetleborgs or Beast Wars? And the thing is, the Beast Wars, like, support, you know, putting women on birth control. But Beetleborgs are against that. So they're cool. They're not for babies. Uh, uh, it says here, like, uh, another one of the fans of the company was the, uh, the famous uh, zip tie guy from the, uh, the, the Capitol riot. Um, it says here... Uh, in the 13-page affidavit the Bureau filed in support of Munchell's arrest, the words handgun, shotgun appear once, Trump twice, taser three times, and Black Rifle Coffee Company four times. <laughs> Damn, that and guy is I, a super user. Yeah, I can't believe this guy is behaving like he's an operator. <laughs> Who could? How could he have gotten that idea? Uh, he says here, uh, I would never want my brand to be represented in that way, shape or form, Hafer said, because that's not me. 
Yeah, no, you should just, yeah, you should do this to Muslims. Yeah, it's like, that's not, not, not me because yeah. I have a successful coffee company and I yeah. have a house and I'm not uh, terrified uh, of falling a uh, guy with a fucking lien on his house or a mortgage or, or hasn't been able to get a job, which is more true of the people who are taking this stuff seriously. I mean, like, but, but I mean, doesn't this just is, isn't this just exactly the same thing as we were talking about with like 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 the virus and like anti-vaccination stuff, where it's just like, oh, the stock market crashes or someone you know dies without getting the vaccine, then you're like, guys, we have to get this vaccine, and then like the last year of everything you said is just like, oh, like I, I didn't mean that. That that's not me. I wasn't implying that you shouldn't get the vaccine. I just think like it's okay to raise questions or whatever, and it's just like these people are not just raising questions or. Or, 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 or fronting for some kind of idea of like bodily autonomy or like the right to make your own medical decisions. That's not what they were doing. They were, they were flatly denying that, like, that, that, that any of this was real at all. And now that like they face even the moment's pressure or fucking scrutiny for it, they're just like, oh, they're back up against the wall and they're like, oh, like, that's not fair. That wasn't me. I'm not associated with this in any way, shape, or form. Um, it goes on to say, uh, so, like, so they, they in response to this, um, they, they, they it says the company uh, conspicuously uh, made an effort to like to separate itself from the zip tie guy. Um, it says following pressure from the company, Schaefer deleted his tweets in support of him, and Hafer released a video statement in which he clarified that while Black Rifle believed in the Constitution, the Second Amendment, and the right to bear arms, that a per and that a person is innocent until proven guilty, the company didn't sponsor. Oh, Rittenhouse! This is about the guy who shot a bunch of people at a Black Lives Matter protest. Uh, we're not in the business of profiting from tragedy. The limited disavow disavowal triggered fury on the right. The people that run Black Rifle Coffee are no different than most scammers involved in the conservative grift. Nick Fuentes, a prominent white nationalist activist, wrote on Twitter, they're giant douchebag posers in flip-flops and baseball caps. When push comes to shove, they are expletive liberals. And it's like, well, yeah. it's, fu it's funny that Nick, Nick Fuentes is accusing someone else of being a, a, a douchebag wearing flip-flops and a con artist. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, well, yeah, everyone is. And yeah, he is welcome, as well. Welcome, I mean, to, he's, welcome, welcome to America, buddy. He's just he's grinding for subscribers too, just in a much shallower pool because of how just basically repellent he is. I do like I do like uh, to rewind a bit the Black Rifle guy going like we don't want to profit off of tragedy, which is very revealing because it's like no, you didn't know when I do that when we do this into here square, this isn't a tragedy. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. There's another great quote here. It says. Uh, this was the dilemma in which Black Rifle now found itself. Quote, how do you build a cool, kind of irreverent, pro-Second Amendment, pro-America brand in the MAGA era, Hafer wondered aloud, without doubling down on the MAGA movement and not being called a expletive rhino by the MAGA guys? Yeah, it does sort of seem like you're in a bind here, Matt. Uh, <laughs> Matt. Yeah, well... You know, best of luck. Are you tired of the pussification of the American male? Who's too afraid to defend themselves, saying shit like, violence shouldn't exist. Shut the fuck up. I believe that men should enjoy the finer things in life, like badass women and great coffee. Um, just like uh, scrolling down here, like there's a very funny thing um, in, in the article where there's like the, the photos that are included in it of like from their from their office. Uh, there, there's a photo of a big whiteboard. Um, and, and like it, it, the handwriting is a little hard to read, but you can make out 10 iconic designs, May 2021. Um, and under, under the iconic designs, we have uh, Battle Unicorn, Bear Wolf, Muff Diver, Space, in quotation marks, Party Panther, Manatee Fight, and Grateful Dead Space Bear. Cool. <laughs> I mean, I recognize the space bear. I know what that looks like. I don't know what the other ones are. Oh, uh, also another epic, uh, epic iconic design: rooster on a tire swing. Is that like? <laughs> is that like one of those things you're supposed to put together? Like big swinging dick, big swing cock. Oh, you're right. That's yeah. probably what it is. Like yeah. a, a swinging dick. Yeah, there yeah. we go. And then also, my, I think my favorite: alien intact to squatch scheme. So like like an alien, but instead of smoking weed, they're like in camo, and they're like, yeah, let's yeah. let's get some. Yeah, take me to your pedophile warlord in <laughs> Afghanistan that I'll bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> Say I'm cool for doing it. I'm just like skipping ahead here. It says, uh, 
Black Rifle 2 presents itself as a lifestyle brand with its hats, t-shirts, and other flag and firearm bedecked merchandise accounting for more than 15% of the company's 2020 sales. At times, Black Rifle has explicitly presented itself as a trolley, Trumpy alternative to the Seattle giant. When Starbucks pledged to hire 10,000 refugees to protest Trump's 2017 executive order banning visas to applicants from seven countries, most of whose populations were majority Muslim, Black Rifle created a social media meme with Starbucks cups photoshopped alongside ISIS fighters. In 2019, after an Oklahoma police officer posted a photo on Starbucks of, on Facebook of a Starbucks cup that a barista had labeled pig, Best appeared on Fox and Friends, the Trump-beloved talk show, to announce that Black Rifle was giving the officer and his department enough coffee so they'll never have to go to Starbucks again. But they will. <laughs> no, they will. That's Everyone's got to go to Starbucks. Still, I would bet money that more of these guys went to Starbucks after that happened because it became part of the experience is being like, Oh, I would hate it if a bisexual like call, called me racist on my cup. Yeah. Like that would be the most exciting thing that ever happened to them. They probably went like twice a day after that, hoping that would happen. That's not the whole and, thing and, you know, of like using Donald Trump as your name on the cup. It's like to get some sort of frisian, to get some sort of uh, energy out of uh, out of the banal experience of going to get coffee that everybody has made part of their lives. I mean, honestly, they should do something where Starbucks, if you work at Starbucks, they make you part of Screen Actors Guild and like, yeah. give you all the benefits and like pay you way more. And you can like play the part of the evil barista and be like, you know, you can you can only get your like 1300 calorie Frappuccino if you admit that God's not real and then you can kill them. <laughs> but there will be squibs. It will be squibs. Yeah. And every Starbucks employer employee makes a quarter of a million dollars a year to do that. But the, the lattes well, cost a th- hundred dollars and people they would still pe- go. These pigs would still fucking go. Would love because to pay yeah. Them. Yeah. No, it's like everyone used to make fun of those things where it's like, you know, I called somebody. It, it was like a goon thing. It was like, oh, there were some rap style people in the movie theater. And I like called them ignoramuses. And everyone <laughs> applauded for me. <laughs> everyone like made fun of that. But like now that's everyone. Yeah. Everyone wants a moment like that because that's like, yeah, the only thing you can get in America. And it's like, no, Starbucks probably like plants those like bullshit, like debunk stories where it's like, yeah, they put pig on the cup. Because they like it makes these guys go there more. If you if that happens to you, you can become you can have a media career, which is like that's all anyone in America wants anymore. Correct. A media career. Absolutely. Hey, why wouldn't they? It's pretty good. It's not bad. Actually, it's harder than a lot of jobs. <laughs> it's actually pretty hard. It's not cool. You uh, want one. Here, here is coming up here. Here's, here's I think I think the most telling and my favorite quote in this piece. Uh, Tom Davin, a former executive at Taco Bell and Panda Express, who two years ago became Black Rifle's co-chief executive, says, "Our customer is driving a tricked-out Ford F-150. It's blue collar, above average income. Some college educated. Good, I love a good, I love a good blue collar, yeah, above blue, average income. Yeah, blue collar, <laughs> above average income is, is their demographic, and like." I mean, th- this this so perfectly encapsulates everything we've talking about about like a uh, class and culture war just being based on consumer decisions. Yeah. So because like you're blue collar if you drive a tricked out F one fifty even if you went to college and are above average income because you have the uh, tastes of 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 uh, you know a, a red state uh, a typical red state guy. Well, I mean, and hell, most lives. of those red state guys are that way too. Like all those like yeah. self consciously political people in this country tend to be what more well off. And and so uh, the the signifiers are mostly being uh, utilized by people who are self consciously trying to adopt a persona. Yeah, yeah. He goes on to say it's people who shop at Walmart rather than Target. I mean, like, <laughs> There's no the, difference the two, between those the two, two identical oh. fucking chain box stores. Yeah, exactly this is, the same. They have the same <laughs> shit. This is a Powerade house. Get your fucking Gatorade ass out of here. You're against everything that we stand for. And yeah, it's true. Like there are pl- there's plenty of uh, libs who think that they're better people because they go to Target instead of Walmart. But it's the same fucking delusion. No, yeah, you're buying the same dog shit stuff. Yeah, you're all you, eating you, the same slop, you pigs. You you're all going to the slave labor emporium. Uh, just skipping ahead a little bit. Um, by the way, uh, it it, or, uh, it does talk about how Hafer, like his background in the military, is that he was a CIA contractor in 
Afghanistan, Iraq, Israel, the Philippines, and elsewhere. Okay, so and this guy says, has the, <laughs> this guy is in possession of the Jeffrey Epstein uh, uh, videos for sure. That's I want to find out the way he got to the Philippines. He was like, "Oh no, I heard bad stuff happens there." <laughs> oh no, I don't want to be sent there or Thailand. Uh, well, it says here, uh, by 2013, he was running a CIA program in Kabul, divorced from his first wife and disgruntled with American foreign policy. He concluded that the war there wasn't being waged to defend the United States or promote democracy. Rather, it was about enriching the military industrial complex with the largest transfer of taxpayer wealth in American history. The CIA did not renew his contract the following year. And, you know, hence, that's why he has a coffee company now. But what I like about this is... Why like do he's these like, homosexuals keep sucking my <laughs> cock? <laughs> what I like about that is, like, he became disillusioned, and he's like, we're not fighting for freedom or democracy. We're fighting to enrich the military-industrial complex. So I'm going to go back and uh, start a lifestyle brand based on entirely glorifying that exact same military-industrial complex. Hey, if, if, all the, if everyone is just trying to get paid, then isn't the imperative to be one of the people getting paid? Yeah. Instead of sacrificing... For some abstract ideal, like a chump, uh, this is like a, a good rundown of uh, <laughs> like uh, operator style uh, brands here. It says uh, the fascination with and romantic romanticization of special operations gave us video games like the later installments in the Call of Duty franchise, movies like Lone Survivor, and a sagging shelf of Navy SEAL memoirs. It also gave rise to an entire industry retrofitting operator culture as a lifestyle. There's Grunt Style, a popular clothing brand far founded by a former army drill sergeant that sells camouflage polyester shorts, ranger panties, and t-shirts with a variety of skull and ammunition-centric designs. That's awesome. The apparel company uh, 511, which manufactured specialty pants for rock climbers, started going by the name 511 Tactical in 2003 and soon began, telling, began selling t-shirts with twin underarm pockets, a quick, comfortable, and covert solution for concealed carry wear, and active shooter response bags this is specifically designed to carry assault rifle magazines. It now has 85 retail stores in 20 seven states uh just just real quick going back to the idea of a tactical t-shirt with twin underarm pockets which are a comfortable covert solution for concealed carry wear am i am i led to believe that you would be concealed carrying a pistol in a hidden pocket on your t-shirt in your armpit yeah and you just go okay, under there right, and you cool. get it <laughs> all right all right i see yeah, you just sort of like pull it out okay cool but i mean it would have to be a pretty small gun no I mean, you, you can have like, like I, a 45 I, in there or anything i, I have a tumor <laughs> I have side I have side boob on one side. Happens it's tactical. To a lot of veterans. You wouldn't understand. It's a tactical yeah. thing. You wouldn't understand. Appearing on Fox and Friends in 2017 to respond to Starbucks' pledge to hire 10,000 refugees, Hafer announced that Black Rifle intended to hire 10,000 veterans. Oh, uh, I bet they the make G awesome coffee. <laughs> <laughs> just guy, the just any time the roaster pops, they just empty 30 rounds into it. <laughs> but it says here, coming from the chief executive of, of a company that at the time had about 50 employees, this was a transparent publicity stunt. But I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that's it, 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 like Black Rifle and what they represent. I, th I think what we're getting at here are just sort of like it. I mean, it, it, it's it, I think it's deeply weird and disturbing that so much of like American popular culture and consumer culture is based on like glorifying being a, you know, a warrior or I'm a death giver. I'm a, I'm a reaper. I, I you know, I'm a, I'm a wolf protecting the sheep or whatever from like, you know, just like, like fat suburban losers and just all this. The kind of like Punisher kit and this kind of like, you know, the, the skull death's head logo on like, you know, panties that you can buy your girlfriend or whatever. Um, but yeah, but like this is just part and parcel of what everything is now. Right. I mean, it's all just a, a, a big publicity stunt. Yeah. He goes, uh, this is a, this is a, someone speaking. He goes, he goes, uh, you have an entire generation of guys over the last 20 years that were trained to deploy and kill people. Hafer told me it's the most politically incorrect profession. Let's just say what it is. You're going to take life. And then you have this evolutionary circumstance in society, which says that everything has to be politically correct. And now what they want is a generation of guys to do is come home and be nice. They want us to all be politically correct. They want us to be watered down versions of ourselves because I think they just want to forget and move on with their lives. I mean, is it really political correctness to be against killing people? I mean, at least in America. I mean, I know we don't care. Well, they about don't want to kill people. anybody. They just want it. it they just. Like you're talking about, they just want their uh, their persona to be validated. 
That's it. They just want to be validated in their preferences. And, and, and they feel like the culture at large is, is judging it. And a lot of that judgment is internal. They're just imagining it because they're insecure like we all are. Uh, and then they are able to uh, express that insecurity in a culture that, yes, has this civilizing ethos around it that says that you leave the violence outside of the, uh, of the borders of the country uh, and that it, it's something that should be uh, pursued you know, reluctantly and not to be glorified, even though uh, that's what you're going to create as a culture that by definition has to end up glorifying violence. So, I mean, they're right that it is an attempt to sort of deny the reality of, of be, living at the center of a global empire that is maintained in part by continual death dealing in foreign countries. Uh, but, I mean, their objection isn't to uh, uh, any specific imprisonment of their uh, desire because they just want to come home and, yeah, sell some fucking coffee and wear a T-shirt and, and uh, upset the, the liberals. Uh, it, it's just it's. It's more than anything a framework to give them a uh, a struggle that yeah. they can fixate on and grievances to fixate on to ignore the emptiness otherwise. Uh, just last paragraph here. Uh, the racism expletive really pisses me off, Hafer said. I hate racist, proud, boyish people. Like, I'll pay them to leave my customer base. I would gladly chop all of these people out of my expletive customer database and pay them to get the expletive out. If that was the case, I asked, had Black Rifle, which sells a thin blue line coffee, considered changing the name of its Beyond Black coffee, a dark roast that had sold for, two, for years, to Beyond Black Lives Matter? Surely that would alienate the racists polluting its customer base. Hafer began to laugh. You wouldn't do that, I ventured. I would never do that, Hafer replied. We're trying to be us. Just, you just got to do you. And, you know, you got to also drink a coffee that is, um, you know, congruent with your personality. Yeah, have it your way. <laughs> All right. Uh, finally, for today's show, the uh, the reading series of the week.